One of the more common ways that we're going to get to moles in a problem is by starting with grams. So let's take a look at how to do that um, using some info from the periodic table. So the thing that we're really getting at here with moles is we're using moles to count groups of pieces um, and specifically in this case we're using most count groups of atoms so those groups are macroscopic things and the atoms are microscopic things so moles help us connect the micro to the macro world one of the macroscopic properties that is usually pretty easy for us to measure is mass so most of the information that we're going to need for that is either in the problem or on the periodic table. So for um, every element in the periodic table, and I've got just a little snip of a periodic table here, uh, different periodic tables have different amounts of information. This one is pretty basic. Uh, up here we've got the atomic number, which tells us the number of protons in zinc, identified by the chemical symbol. And the number beneath that is the atomic mass. So this is how many grams one mole of zinc weighs. Um, you notice there are no units on this because this is also um, the atomic mass unit mass of a single zinc atom on average. So depending whether we're looking at it microscopically as an atomic mass unit or macroscopically as a grams per mole, we'll use that number just slightly differently with different units. All right, so let's just jump in and take a look at a problem. How many moles of zinc are present in a 37.294 gram piece of pure zinc? Um, we just saw that number on the periodic table. Uh, the atomic mass of zinc is 65.39 grams per mole. So we can set that up this way. Um, 37.294 grams of zinc times moles per gram or divided by grams per mole, depending how you want to think about that, gets us 0 0.5703 moles of zinc. Now, before we get too far, if one mole of zinc has a mass of 65 grams and our sample has a mole of 37 grams, we can just do a quick little look. Well, our sample has quite a bit less than one mole of zinc. And looking back down here, sure enough, our result is less than one mole of zinc. So we're in good shape. The other thing to look at, you know, do we multiply? Do we divide? How do we do this? Always watch your units and let your units set things up for you. So by setting this up this way, moles per gram instead of grams per mole, I can cancel those units out. So this is grams of zinc divided by grams of zinc, so that unit goes away. What if I've got something that's a little bit more complex than a zinc atom? So what if I've got a molecule or um, an ionic compound or formula? Uh, how do I treat that? Well, fortunately, it's very, very similar. The main difference is instead of using a number directly off the periodic table, we need to calculate a formula mass or a molecular mass, um, sometimes called a formula weight or a molecular weight. Um, so let's take a look at an example using sodium cyanide. So first of all, what's the formula mass of sodium cyanide? Looking at that, I've got one sodium in there, I've got one carbon, and I've got one nitrogen. So I just pulled these number, numbers off the periodic table. Sodium has an atomic mass of 22.990 grams per mole. Carbon is 12.011 grams per mole. And nitrogen is 14.007 grams per mole. Putting those together, I can just count up the number of pieces. So there's one sodium in every one sodium cyanide. And that one sodium has a mass of 22.990 grams per mole, or one mole of sodium in each mole of sodium cyanide. Similarly with carbon, I've got one mole of carbon for every mole of sodium cyanide at 12.01 grams per mole. 
nitrogen, one mole per mole of sodium cyanide, 14.007 grams per mole. Multiply and add them all up, and the formula mass for sodium cyanide is 49.008 grams per mole. Again, always check your units and always make sure that your units cancel out correctly. Here I'm canceling moles of sodium and moles of sodium, and from this piece I'm left with grams per mole of sodium cyanide. If I'm adding together, I better have the same units. Cancel moles of carbon, and I'm left with grams per mole of sodium cyanide. Same thing with nitrogen. Cancel nitrogen, left with grams per mole of sodium cyanide, so my result is grams per mole of sodium cyanide. Now we can look at the same type of sample problem. How many moles of sodium cyanide are present in 72.159 grams of sodium cyanide? The formula mass is used exactly the same way as the atomic mass is used for atomic, uh, atomic substances. I've got a certain number of grams, 72.159 of sodium cyanide times one mole of sodium cyanide has a mass of 49.08 grams of sodium cyanide. And again, let's just do a quick prediction. I've got more grams of sodium cyanide than are present in one mole, so I better get a number that's bigger than one. And sure enough, I've got a number bigger than one, 1 1.4723 moles of sodium cyanide. Make sure our units behave looks good and that's how we make our way through the problem.